Today I will be going over the use and functions of an oscilloscope. An oscilloscope is basically a way of seeing audio or sound waveforms on this little screen right here. The oscilloscope is an electronic display device holding a cathode ray tube similar to the old school TVs that we used to have back until LED and LCD screens took over and it produces visible patterns that are graphical representations of electrical signals, such as audio. The graphs plot the relationships between two or more variables, with the horizontal axis normally being a function of time, and the vertical axis a function of voltage generated by the input, or if you want to talk about it in another way, volume, amplitude, decibels, etc. But it's actually measured in volts right here. And our time, our horizontal axis, is measured in time, measured in seconds. To understand how an oscilloscope works, you need to know a little bit of prior knowledge before watching this video. We need to understand the difference between AC, alternating current, and DC, direct current. Also, a helpful thing to know is what exactly a sine wave is uh, and all the other various basic wave shape types triangle wave, square wave, and sawtooth. For this demonstration I'm mostly going to use the sine wave function. On this oscilloscope there are two channels available, channel 1 and channel 2 which are controlled by this, this little line separates the two of them. So, uh, we have AC versus DC coupling. So AC will basically display only the AC component of the input. DC will display the DC component of the input. The difference is that DC will show AC, but AC will not show any DC offset that might be in the audio path. So, we can select from the front of our oscilloscope to view channel 1 or channel 2, which I have nothing playing right now. We can also view in the vertical mode, we can view two waves at the same time, and we can reposition them so that we can see how they look one on top of the other. So. Or we can quote unquote add the signals together and see how they are responding together. Just to show you the tools that I'm using today, I'm using a another BK Precision device which is the function generator, basically a fancy sine wave synthesizer tone generator, and I'm also using my computer online tone generator. Uh, the website is shinalski.com slash tone dash generator. So with each channel, we have a volts per division knob right here. So basically, more or less, I'm changing how big this wave is in the screen. And I'm changing that, each one of these squares, there's eight squares top to bottom, and ten squares left to right. So these eight squares can be represented, right now I'm looking at five volts per division. And since I'm taking up about two graticules, that means that my peak to peak of this AC waveform is about, more or less, ten volts. If I go to two volts per division, then two times four graticules gives me eight nine-ish volts. If I go to one volt per division, then the waveform starts to get too big and I can't really read it. We know that since there's eight graticules and it's slightly above and below, it's about 8.5 volts. It's not a super precise tool, at least this model. There are much fancier versions out there. And then obviously if I zoom in more, I will see nothing useful at all. So you set your volts per division according to whatever the input signal is. Then your time per division is set for both channels with this one knob. So I'm viewing about one, two, three, four, five, six cycles of the waveform right now. 
And right now, each graticule or square is showing two milliseconds. So if I zoom out, then I have more milliseconds per graticule. And that's not very useful. We can't really tell anything. If we zoom in, though, turn the knob to the right, then we can see one waveform start to finish. The peak and then the trough and back to zero. Right now, we're looking at a fairly stabilized waveform because I've set this trigger level appropriately. If you are not getting a good waveform on your oscilloscope, if you change the trigger level, then maybe you have something like this to start with and you want it to get it stabilized, then you move the trigger level so that the oscilloscope can synchronize to your waveform. So either in too far either direction, we don't see a good image, but then once I get right to the point where it can stabilize, then it's good. So again, the oscilloscope is not a precision tool, at least this model. There are some better versions out there in the world. But we can get a rough sense of what frequency we're looking at here based on how many graticules it's taking up. So if I look at my oscillator, we're right around 300 hertz. 300 cycles per second. So if I count the number of graticules, one, two, three, four, five, six, and about a half, we have 6.5 graticules. We are set to 0.5 milliseconds. So 0.5 milliseconds equals 0 0.0005 seconds. Approximately 6.5 graticules. So then that 0 0.0005 times 6.5 graticules gives us 0 0.00325. Since frequency is 1 divided by time, or the inverse of time in seconds, then if we put that number into our calculation, 1 over 0 0.00325, and we get 307.69 hertz, or cycles per second. Again, it's not a precision tool, but it gets us in the ballpark, and we can get an idea. And showing you again, we're taking up about one, two, three, four, and some change graticules in the vertical axis. And our volts per division is set to two. So two times 4.2, let's call it, will give us 8.4 volts peak to peak. We can see various different wave types. Basically, we can see what our audio looks like. So if I change it to a triangle wave, we see a triangle wave. Sawtooth, not the best sawtooth in the world, but it's definitely a sawtooth. Square wave, we don't really see the line there. Let me try to, no, we can't really see it. Pulse, and other pulse. But back to our sine wave. So we can view the waveform. We can go into different ranges. Super duper high frequency, that's 30 kilohertz. So I have to zoom in to see more of the waves again. I'll go even higher, uh, 385 kilohertz. This one goes all the way up to 30 megahertz. So I can go pretty ridiculously high with this, but let's keep it in audio ranges for our testing purposes. So since my time per division has changed, I'm zoomed into the waveform right now. And my frequency at this moment is 2.9 hertz. So I have to zoom back out, and there we can start to see the trace of our very slow three cycles per second wave. Okay, let's get it back up to audio range. There we go, we've got 300 hertz. We'll zoom back in. Now I'll set the tone generator to sweep. It's uh, kind of a sawtooth sweep. So I'll pull it on. That's a very slow sweep, but as the frequency goes higher, we see more and more cycles of the wave. I'll set it to be a little bit wider.
But the real fun with the oscilloscopes happens when you view two waveforms at the same time. So I'm going to play the tone generator from my computer as well. And we'll hear it phasing in and out because the hardware tone generator that I have isn't quite locked to a specific frequency all the time. If I go vertical mode channel 1, I see the oscillator that we've been looking at. Channel 2, it's not synchronized because the coupling source is set to channel 1 still. If I couple it to channel 2, we'll see a stabilized waveform. Okay, and then I'll go to dual, or we'll see both of the waves at the same time. So, the cool thing about this is we can see when the waves go in phase, and then very slowly, almost 180 degrees out of phase, right about there, and they're f almost fully canceling, it gets very quiet. Because if we have negative 4 volts, and we have plus 4 volts, and we sum negative 4 plus, plus 4, then we get effectively zero. Or if they're in phase, then we add plus 4 to plus 4 and we get plus 8. So we're viewing two waveforms at the same time. Now let's add them together. And we'll see the addition of these two waves. So right now, we're super big. And as they go out of phase with each other, the volume will decrease almost to nothing. And then back up. So that's fun enough, but let's make the frequencies beat with each other, and then we'll start to see the waveform dancing. There's 450 hertz on top of our 300 hertz, which would be a fifth. So we see beautiful mathematical patterns whenever the harmonics are related to each other. And I'll go all the way up to the next octave, which 300 times 2 gives us 600 hertz. stable so we're gonna see a wavering in the pattern but basically we should see two cycles for the 600 Hertz versus at one cycle for the 300 Hertz and then we'll keep going higher That's 2.4 kilohertz or 2400 hertz. So that's four octaves up from the original tone. So viewing two waveforms at the same time is fun, but there's an even more fun mode on an oscilloscope. It is called XY mode. If you see right there, so we set anything that says the blue XY. Now our channel 1 becomes the x-axis, the horizontal axis, and y becomes the vertical axis. So there's a little switch up there, and now the dot is centered. So what we're going to see, if we turn on the first oscillator, is a horizontal line. I turn on the second oscillator, and I see a vertical line. So then, if we take those two and add them together, one drawing the x-axis and the other one drawing the y-axis, what we see is a graphical representation of the phase of those two waves. And again, 
the function generator I have isn't totally precise and stable, but close enough. So what we see here is whenever there's a line from the bottom left to the top right of the screen, like now, they are perfectly in phase with each other. When we see a line from bottom right to top left, that means that they are 180 degrees canceling each other out, out of phase. So the sound, as you can hear, kind of nullifies and gets quieter at that exact moment when that happens. So the other thing is that we can see mathematical relationships with different frequencies. So we're both at 300 hertz more or less right now. So I'll take the second oscillator and start to go faster. Those musical relationships are not necessarily related, so we won't see any beautiful pictures. That sounds pleasing. That's our first musical relationship. There's a minor third, major third. Oops, I missed the fourth. so the octave above 300 hertz. And we see a Pringle chip. We see two humps, meaning that this frequency, the secondary oscillator, is two times the original 300 hertz oscillator. Then I'll go to the octave above that, 1200 hertz. Slightly go up, slowly, and go up, and back down below 300 hertz. The whole screen kind of rotates 90 degrees. There's the octave below 300 hertz, or 151, and then 75, right about there. Sine waves are cool, but let's try viewing sawtooth waves. Thanks for watching.